Now let's talk about our liquid line. The liquid line is carrying the liquid refrigerant from the condensing unit over to our metering device at the inside. On light commercial and residential, that's usually gonna be a 3 8 liquid line, regardless of the size. But this liquid line on commercial gets huge in size. But this liquid line somewhere on it will have a liquid line filter dryer. Now that liquid line filter dryer can be on the liquid line inside of the outdoor unit, but it's still gonna be after the condenser, but it may be before the valve, but it's still a liquid line filter dryer. That liquid line filter dryer can also be located in the house right before the evaporator. Now, ideally, your liquid line filter dryer goes before your metering device to protect it, but where that's located really depends on your environment. If you're in Florida, you really don't want to put this outside because it's going to rust away. So if you're in the desert, eh, it depends. I mean, there's going to be an argument either way, but it needs to have one there. The only exception to that filter liquid line filter dryer is going to be a ductless system. Now let's talk about if this line needs insulation or not. So this line is the easiest one to work with. You can usually bend it by hand. It'll usually come in a roll like this and we can work this refrigerant line. It's very easy. We always make sure that we cap them when we're not using them so we keep this dehydrated. It is outside diameter and it is dehydrated cleaned ACR refrigeration piping. But this piping is usually not insulated because it's still giving out heat. There are two scenarios. We want to make sure we insulate that. One is going to be a ductless unit because a ductless unit, we haven't got to it yet, but the meter device is actually located at the outdoor unit. So it's not a true liquid line. It's more like a saturated liquid line. The other example when you're going to want to insulate this liquid line is if it's running it through the attic. So let's give you an example. Let's say I have subcooling of... Oh, let's say we have a 10 degree of subcooling. That just sounds good. The unit calls for 10 degrees of subcooling. We have 10 degrees of subcooling. Let's say the outdoor temperature is 90 degrees Fahrenheit and our actual liquid line temperature is say, that liquid line temperature is say 95 degrees. So it's still giving off heat because it's warmer than the outdoor temperature. But let's say our liquid line runs up the wall then it runs across the attic. And our attic is say 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Second law of thermodynamics states the heat will go to the cooler area. So if this line, if this temperature here was, what do we say, 90, 95, either way, the heat from the attic is going into this line. We are losing subcooling. We are putting sensible heat back into this line. So the temperature, if we are to calculate subcooling right before our meeting device, we may have zero degrees of subcooling, which means that we're at saturation. And I've even seen it so bad before to where the suction line actually gets in saturation and the refrigerant starts boiling off before it ever gets that metering device. So that's gonna be an issue. So on those conditions, we wanna make sure that we insulate this liquid line. Pretty much as a general rule, anytime I'm having a liquid line run in the attic, I wanna make sure it's insulated because I do have the possibility of it losing uh, some of that subcooling. In other words, adding sensible heat back to the refrigerant. Subcooling, we wanna remove sensible heat below saturation. If I put sensible heat back into it, such as an attic uh, or some commercial and industrial application, we have a lot of heat then you could definitely lose your subcooling. So it's going to be very important to make sure you insulate it in those scenarios. A lot of people don't think about those aspects of it, but it is true. We can do all the math on it and all the science on it if you want and give you tons of examples on it. But think, if the liquid line's running in the attic, it's very possible for us to lose subcooling. And I've diagnosed many, many units that were having the liquid refrigerant boil back off before it got to the metering device. And the whole issue with their capacity control was because of that. We put a uh, insulation on that liquid line, solved many, many, many of those problems. So very important to think of. A restriction can also cause those as well, but that'll be what we'll talk about another day. But uh, liquid lines, very important. Uh, you can get them hard drawn copper, soft drawn. It's outside diameter. Usually it's not insulated unless it's in an attic or a ductless system. And somewhere in that liquid line, you're gonna have a filter dryer unless it's a ductless system. Ductless systems also don't use liquid line filter dryers. And we'll do a special section on just ductless units and why and how all that stuff works. But it connects the outdoor unit all the way to the heating device inside. Liquid refrigerant, you touch this, it's gonna be a warm, warmer than your hand temperature, subcooled liquid. So the heat's leaving this line, usually going into your hand, so it feels warm. But according to the refrigerant itself, subcooled liquid. And if you were to touch the line here and touch it, it's gonna burn you, it will literally burn your hand. And then you get over here to this side, you can feel, oh, the refrigerant is much cooler because it's a subcooled liquid. And mainly because it changed state from vapor to liquid, then we subcooled it below that. Liquid line, and it's a small 3 8 line. So if you want to add that to your subcooling. For some reason, I have a lot of students that get this line mixed up. So I've done a song for them 
to help uh, you remember it. And now when I'm in class, I'll actually play the song, but no matter how I try doing it, uh, the Beatles seem to mute my YouTube video on it. So I'm just gonna have to do it. You're gonna have to play along with me. But uh, it goes something like this. Visual effect here, let's say that we have the line here in the ocean. Below this line is all liquid. Above that line is vapor. So it's a vapor above it, liquid below it. And if you've ever seen the movie Hunt for Red October, there was a submarine over here that was below it. And that submarine, now this is their saturation, liquid and vapor. The submarine is below saturation. So in that liquid line, the red line, the high pressure line, we've put this song together. And let's think about the saturation, how deep the submarine is below saturation. That's our subcooling where we're actually at. So the song goes something like this, and please don't hate me. I hate doing this, but I make my class sing it. Help them remember. So, we all live in a red submarine. Red for subcooling, red for subcooling. High pressure liquid. We all live in a red submarine. Red for subcooling, red for subcooling. High pressure liquid. So if you've heard that song or not, it's actually the Yellow Submarine, we modified it. Uh, sorry Beatles and sorry for hearing your song if you were like that song like I do, but it's a great way to help you remember it. So if you wanna play that song and replace every time they talk about uh, a Yellow Submarine, replace it with a Red Submarine, Red for subcool liquid, and then add in high pressure vapor, that's our liquid line. And if you wanna also think about the suction line being above, the suction line being above, Superman over here, he's flying in the air, my awesome drawing right here and Superman if you can't tell. So Superman he's flying above the waterline, he's in the air and it's low temperature vapor. He's flying in the vapor up high and the distance he is above saturation is how superheated he is. Superman, superheated vapor up in the sky, low temperature, low pressure up there and the temperature is cooler. So Superman's above saturation submarine, below saturation we all live in the red submarine and then there's baby blue or uh, super heat song, super heat, super heat, super heated vapor, whichever you want to think of. Whatever it takes to help you understand and remember this, that's my goal here.